In this section, we'll be discussing what curvature continuity is and why it's important to inventor surfacing models. Let's start by talking about G. G just stands for geometry. In front of us here, we have two geometries, two lines, and in fact, these are actually G null, G nothing. There's no relationship between these two lines at all. Now I can create a G0 relationship. I'll select my line, choose Edit Sketch, and I'll come up here to my constraints, and I'll choose a coincident constraint. I'll choose this point and this point, and I've now created a G0 relationship between these two lines at the point they come together. A G0 relationship just means they touch. I'll right click and choose OK and finish this sketch. Let me roll down the next example. These lines have a G1 relationship. So we have two geometries coming together, they touch, and we're looking for one more thing. We're also looking for tangency. So it's pretty easy to see that this line and this line are tangent. This arc and this line are also tangent. And this arc and the line are tangent, as well as this line and the spline are also tangent. All these geometries have a G1 relationship. Let's take a look at the next. This is a G2 relationship. So they touch, they're tangent. We're also looking for two geometries that have the same curvature at the point where they touch. These two arcs have the same curvature, they have the same radius. But in fact, this arc and this spline also have the same curvature at the point they touch. Let's take a look at our final example. This is a G3 relationship. This time, the two geometries touch, they're tangent, they have the same amount of curvature, and they also have the same amount of acceleration. That's the amount of change, the change in curvature between where the line starts and where it finishes, and where it starts and finishes. The easiest way to show this is to turn on the curvature display. I'll select this geometry, I'll hold down the control key and select this one, I'll right click and choose display curvature. These curvature combs show the amount of curvature around this arc is constant, as we'd expect from an arc. At the point where the arc joins the spline, we can see the curvature is constant before it changes. Down here, click, click, right click, choose display curvature. We can see that the curvature changes, but is the same and is nice and smooth as the rate of acceleration is the same down the other side. This is a really nice, smooth porcupine graph here to show us the relationship between these two geometries. While your geometry may look really nice and clean on the screen, it may not be so clean when you get the part made in real life. It's really important to understand the relationship between your geometries so you get what you're looking for in the final manufactured product. And to try and demonstrate this, I have one more thing to show you. I'm going to turn the visibility of these off, roll this down, and I have two more curves here I've prepared. In fact, this is a straight line, and here we have a segment of an ellipse. You can see the straight line has no curvature comb at all. It's because it has an infinite amount of curvature. And then there's this sharp change in curvature at the point where we join the ellipse. So although that looks like a nice smooth transition, actually we can see with the curvature combs, it's really not that smooth at all. Below it, we have two geometries, two splines coming together, and we have a nice smooth curvature comb between the two of them. So I'm just going to come out here a little, I'm going to choose the extrude tool. I'm going to select this first one. I'll choose OK. I'll need to share this sketch. Then I can select the next one. And I'll choose OK there. Finally, we inspect these using a zebra analysis. We'll come to inspect, zebra, and I'll just choose OK with the default settings. Now you can see here that the point of change between the two geometries, between this surface and this surface, as the zebra line goes across, we have this really hard, sharp transition here. So in real life, if we machine this up, this would not look smooth. We would definitely see the transition between those two surfaces. Down here, at the point where they meet between this surface and this surface, we can actually see the transition is really smooth. You can barely see where the edge is at all. And that's probably what we're looking for in our surface models with Inventor. Now, there's just one last thing I want to show you before we finish this segment. I'll make these invisible. And this one. And I'll just drag down this final geometry. I'm going to come up here to the 3D model, come all the way across the surface, patch, and I'll patch this last shape. Here under conditions, I have a little drop down. Currently, this is a free condition. Essentially, this means G0. The edges touch, but that's it. I can also choose tangent condition. This would give a G1 relationship. The edges would touch, they would be tangent, 
but no more. Finally, we have a G2 smooth condition. Now this drop down, you'll find it in the loft command, you'll find it in the sweep command, as well as the boundary patch. Do remember to check this as you create your geometry to make sure you have the relationship you were looking for. In this case, I'll choose tangent, I'll choose okay, and I'm done.